Let's begin with safety. Workplace health and safety is a key factor to the success and well-being of all involved on a project. It's important that everyone understand safety guidelines. A safety and staging review should be conducted regarding the type of work, tools, and materials to be used. A pre-job site review should also be conducted to become familiar with the environment, equipment, and more. Before starting a project, specifications should be read regarding the type of system to be installed. Site-specific reviews of the specification, along with application training, is not only beneficial for the installers, but also for key members of management, engineering, and inspectors. This can help reduce labor, resources, and mistakes on the job site. It can also help to provide a longer lasting, better quality, and more efficient insulation system. When materials arrive at the job site, verify that all specified materials are present and that no substitutions or deviations have been made. Also, check the on-site storage location of foam glass insulation and accessories to ensure compliance with what's listed on the product data sheets. For example, make sure materials are stored in a dry area at proper temperatures. Fabricated materials should be inspected to verify compliance with applicable fabrication standards and check for proper fit. After all piping and equipment is tested and released, the surfaces to be insulated must be clean of all scale, rust, oil, or foreign substances. Piping and equipment must be dry prior to and during the application of insulation. Where corrosion under insulation is a concern, extra care must be taken to help prevent water from entering the insulation system. Since cellular glass is an impermeable insulating material, Areas to focus on for potential water entry are at joints, terminations, protrusions, penetrations, and pipe supports. Proper sealing at these areas is key for the long-term protection of the pipes and success of the insulation system. On the foam glass sealed system, the joints are to be fully sealed using pit seal high temp LV RTV sealant from the exterior of the insulation down to the pipe. This one part neutral cure sealant is formulated for use with foam glass insulation. The lower viscosity of the sealant enables efficient spreading and sealing. It cures to an elastomeric solid at room temperature and is designed to accommodate most expansion and contraction when applied according to specifications. The sealant can be applied to the insulation by spreading or by applying a thick, sufficient bead. When starting an application, it's recommended to start at the fittings, such as 90s, T's, phalanges, and valves, and working away, assuring a tight fit. It's suggested to finish with smaller pieces of insulation away from 90s, T's, or other fittings. That way, if a mistake is made, it can be repaired with a less costly piece of insulation, rather than a custom elbow or T. Insulation securement to piping can be done using filament tape or stainless steel bands on insulation with outer diameters less than or equal to 18 inches. Insulation with outer diameters greater than 18 inches is secured with stainless steel bands. Proper insulation securement to piping is done 9 to 12 inches on center. Filament tape is never the final securement. When using filament tape to secure the insulation in place, the insulation jacketing must be secured with banding or screws. For above ambient applications, screws are an acceptable securement. Wire is never recommended for securement of cellular glass insulation. The tendency to over tighten wire causes it to cut into the insulation and can cause loosening or breakage. Protrusions are a major fail point in hot application systems regarding CUI. When insulating around protrusions, a simple bead around the outer termination point is not enough. 
A sufficient amount of sealant is needed to spread a minimum of two inches or more. Sealing the inner bore of the insulation to the structure to help eliminate moisture entry. Remember, the hot pipe expands as it heats up and contracts when shut down. As the pipe expands and contracts, voids around protrusions can open. Insulation and finish at protrusions should be installed to shed water, helping to eliminate the opportunity for water to collect on flat surfaces that can lead to water entry. It's strongly recommended to seal the inner bore of the insulation on the protrusion and all mating surfaces, including the surrounding area of the pipe insulation. As you install down the pipe, apply the sealant directly onto the open insulation joints. This can be done on the pipe or on the next piece to be installed. As a reminder, enough sealant should be applied or spread to make contact with the pipe and out to the exterior of the joints. Apply additional sealant as necessary at the termination or a flange to make sure it is completely sealed where exposed. On outdoor systems, at hold points, or at the end of the work shift, the system must be protected from water intrusion. If this is not done, water can enter the system, travel along the equipment or pipe surface, and eventually work its way under the insulation system. All paths for water entry into the system should be eliminated by sealing the insulation up to the surface with proper joint sealant and wrapping termination points with plastic or other weather protective materials. Inspection helps increase the likelihood of a properly installed system. After installing the insulation, before the protective jacketing is applied, it's recommended inspectors check that insulation is installed per the specification and that all joints are within the recommended tolerances and sealed where specified. Any repairs are done at this time, before application of the insulation jacketing. One example of how to make a small repair is using our pipe in a pipe method. Here, you cut out the damaged area using a small piece of pipe and replace it with the same size piece cut from spare insulation. Be sure it is fully sealed. Remember to always protect the insulation system during installation by sealing the stopping points with sealant and wrapping the exposed areas with plastic or other protective materials at the end of the day. After the insulation inspection and any necessary repairs are made, it's time to install the jacketing. Jacketing is used for cosmetic purposes or mechanical protection. In this example, we're using a stucco embossed aluminum. There are options to seal or not to seal the metal laps. When sealing the metal laps, remember that the hot pipe and insulation will expand and contract during operation. Therefore, it's important that when a sealant or adhesive is used, it's flexible, especially along the circumferential joints. PC RTV 450 is a dual purpose adhesive sealant that is commonly used to seal jacketing. When using metal bands for securement, we recommend the bands be spaced on 9 to 12 inch centers. Bands should be pulled tight enough to be fully secured, but do not over tighten the bands, as this may crush the insulation and possibly cause the jacket lap to bend upwards, which could allow water to enter the system. At terminations and other areas that need to be sealed, we recommend a full thick bead of flexible sealant to properly seal the jacketing. Thin beads may not properly seal and could allow water to get in. Always clean your area when finished, making sure the materials are disposed in the proper locations. Regularly scheduled inspection and maintenance can help increase the life of the insulation system.